Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, what is a vertex-induced subgraph? Vertex-induced subgraphs are sometimes just called induced subgraphs, but there are also edge-induced subgraphs. So I want to make it clear in this video that we're talking about vertex-induced subgraphs. So let's get into the lesson. Here we've got a magnificent graph. I've written it out as an ordered pair with its vertex set and its edge set here, and of course we're calling it G. So we see this drawing of G here, it's got a few vertices, it's got some edges, it is a fine looking graph. So let's start off by looking at an example of a subgraph of G that is not a vertex induced subgraph. So let me draw these vertices first, we'll use three of the vertices for our subgraph. Let me label them here, this is E. This is A, and this is B. And then the edge we'll include in our subgraph is this one here. So this is a subgraph of G, because every vertex and edge in this graph is also in G. But it's not a vertex-induced subgraph of G. What makes it not a vertex-induced subgraph is that there are two vertices in this subgraph that are not adjacent, that are adjacent in the original graph. And let me say that one more time, because that's really the crux of the definition. This graph here is a subgraph of G, but it's not a vertex-induced subgraph, because there are two vertices in this subgraph that are not adjacent, that are adjacent in the original graph. So what would make this a vertex-induced subgraph is if we had this one extra edge there. Now, this is a vertex-induced subgraph. And what makes it a vertex-induced subgraph is first, it's a subgraph of G. We already went over that. Again, every vertex and edge in this graph is also in G. So it's a subgraph. It is a vertex-induced subgraph because every pair of vertices in this subgraph that is joined by an edge in the original graph is also joined by an edge in this subgraph. And we could denote this vertex-induced subgraph of G like this. So this notation here refers to the subgraph of G induced by the vertices A, B, and E. So this tells us that our graph will contain those three vertices, A, B, and E. And since it is a vertex-induced subgraph, we have to include any edges joining these three vertices that exist in the original graph G. So since A and B are joined by an edge in G, they have to be joined by an edge in this vertex-induced subgraph, and similarly for A and E. So let's look at another example, but let's start off with that vertex-induced subgraph notation. So let's try this. The subgraph of G induced by the set of vertices containing D, E, F, and let's say C. Now we're not talking about edge-induced subgraphs in this lesson, but I'll quickly say we use this same notation for edge-induced subgraphs. If the set in here is a set of edges, then it is the edge-induced subgraph, and if it is a set of vertices, it's a vertex-induced subgraph. But again, we'll talk more about edge-induced subgraphs in another lesson. But since this is a set of vertices, we know that we are looking at a vertex-induced subgraph. And to draw this graph, we need to start off by drawing these four vertices. So this is D, we'll say that this is E, this over here is F, and this up here is C, trying to keep the appearance of the original graph more or less. Throw these labels down on here so we don't forget, D, E, F, C. And now all we have to do is draw our edges. And remember, what is going to make this a vertex-induced subgraph is that any two vertices in this graph that are adjacent in G have to also be adjacent in this graph. So we just have to look at each pair of vertices in this graph, see if that pair is joined by an edge in G, and if they are, we just have to draw that edge. Let's start by looking at D and E. In the graph G, those two vertices are adjacent, so we will draw an edge here joining D and E. A quick look at our graph G tells us that D and F are not adjacent, and D and C are also not adjacent. 
So we're all done with D, let's look at E and F. In our graph G, we see that E and F are adjacent, so we'll join them by an edge in our vertex-induced subgraph. We also see that E and C are adjacent in G, so we'll join them in this subgraph. E and C are joined by that edge there. Now the only pair of vertices we haven't checked is F and C. We see that they are not joined by an edge in the original graph, and so they're not going to be joined by an edge in our vertex-induced subgraph. And this is it, we are done. This is the subgraph of G induced by the vertex set containing D, E, F, and C. So a subgraph of G is a vertex-induced subgraph of G if and only if any vertices that are not adjacent in the subgraph are also not adjacent in the original graph. If the vertices are adjacent in the original graph, they have to be adjacent in the vertex-induced subgraph. So when they're not adjacent in the vertex-induced subgraph, we know that they also can't be adjacent in the original graph, and that's what makes a vertex-induced subgraph. So I hope this video helped you understand what vertex-induced subgraphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Now we're gonna break and take Growing cold with deeper burns. All I can remember is your expression when you used to have.